Everyone is looking for love. And they're desperate to find it. We must show them love. We must introduce them to love, to Jesus. To Jesus. For this is true revival. Love is all they need. Everlasting love. Rise up and go and show them love, revival love, supernatural love. Jesus is love. love. Historically, when there was going to be a disaster or a hardship on God's people, he would raise up the prophets to give warning and the watchmen to pray through. Today, we are going to have a little bit of study time and a little bit of encounter time regarding the ministry of the watchman, because the watchman is very much a real ministry in the body of Christ today. And we have an expert in this field with us, Dr. James Gall. James, it's always good to have you with us. But you have just um, completed this book, The Lifestyle of the Watchman. And so we're going to just peruse this uh, subject today, um, because it's something that you not only have studied, but you have lived it. And so tell us, first of all, so that all of our viewers know, what exactly is a watchman? We know that out of Isaiah 62, it says, On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have appointed watchmen, that day and night they're they're on it. But what does that actually mean? Yeah, that's great, Patricia. So, you know, um, I'm going to give a little like a parenthesis or a little opening on something. It came from my uh, teachings in the Seer book. And these things for me, they all overlap. And in it, I had a dream that was recorded in a book. And it's in it. I was told seers are prophets, but not all prophets are seers. Now, I'm not going to unpack what all that means in right. this, but I'm going to use a parallel. Watchmen are intercessors but not all intercessors are watchmen. I think that just having that little chip out there, it does right. help. And so let's also put a New Testament piece in place. Let me touch that right. Isaiah 62 right. because it says you're chosen. Right. It says I have appointed is right. one translation or it says chosen mm-hmm. watchman. So if you're a watchman, that means God has chosen you. And I believe that God chooses each one of us, but I also believe that we have a free will where we can say yes oh. or we can back off, but we can cooperate. So it's a calling. It's an aspect of intercessory prayer, mm-hmm. but it's in the Greek when Jesus was speaking and he said, could you not tarry with me for an hour? Now, a lot of people say that Jesus said, could you not pray with me an hour? That isn't actually what he said. Right. What he said is, could you not watch with me for an hour? So watching is an aspect of prayer, but prayer is larger than watching. So what's a watchman? A watchman is someone who is on the alert. So what does that look like? Like you have had experiences mm-hmm. as a watchman where God has literally given you warnings about yes. things to come, where you have had to, to stand in the gap, because that's, right. that's what intercessors do, that's is right. we stand mm-hmm. in the gap between God and between man, or be, you know, between the devil and right. man. We stand in the gap. So share some experiences that you had, because that will really paint the picture well, I think. Oh my, there's, there's, there's several of them. And so... Some of them have been to such a degree of like the enemy discerning through dreams and visions and things of this nature that the enemy, powers of darkness, is trying to preempt early, bring about early World War III Mm -hmm. in its fullness before it's in God's timetable. Okay, so I have prayed into things, uh, into uh, the Gulf Wars. I'm talking way back in uh, 1991. And where the Lord, in a dream, showed me an, uh, an, uh, that there would be an engagement in Iraq, and it would start on February 1st, go to February 28th. And he called me to be a man of prayer during a time of war. I had that come to me a year ahead of time. Wow. 
a year ahead of time. That's awesome. But it was also, see, to help me to be alert and also for me to unclutter my schedule so I could be focused. Mm -hmm. Now, so I did, I prayed every day through this ground engagement and the Lord would give me dreams and I would see maps, names of cities that I can't even pronounce and where there could be, you know, some very difficult destruction yep. and, and then pray that it not happened right. or pray that it be lessened. Like an intervention. An intervention. It's, that is an aspect of crisis intervention, which for me went back to also studying in scripture, but the life of Reese Howells from out of Wales and his prayers during World War II to keep the Nazi Germany out of the United Kingdom. And so I also have gone on site to pray with insight in historical places. And in one of those, and I talk about one of the readings in here about on crisis intervention, about the anointing on Reese Howells. Right. And so I had hands laid on me by Samuel Howells, wow. his only son, and he announced the mantle of crisis intervention upon my life. Now, I believe it's available for the whosoevers, though. I believe that we're each chosen, we're each appointed, and you're appointed as a watchman on the walls for your sphere. Amen. That is very important for your sphere. And there might be um, some situations in life where God will call you even to intervene in a family situation where you'll be called to wash in the spirit to make sure that the momentum of God is being realized rather than the momentum of the enemy. Right. And I really feel that there's some of you watching That's right it. now mm -hmm. that you are actually troubled in your spirit uh -huh. by things that the Lord has shown you regarding your family. But he is calling you to stand in the gap. And if yeah. you stand on the wall day and night, just keep making the decrees and take that in uh -huh. your heart and stand in the gap, you're going to see a breakthrough. That's why he appoints, his, appoints watchmen on the walls. That's why you are troubled over it right uh -huh. now is because God has put that on you. He's chosen you for that. But there's others of you that you're being called to a much bigger, uh, uh, a bigger role like, like Dr. James Gall is, a much greater role where it's going to involve, um, you know, God's agenda on greater levels of influence. And some of you, are, you're, you're feeling it. Mm -hmm. From the moment Dr. James Gall started speaking, you started feeling, oh my gosh, I better watch this because this is me. And you mentioned about Reese Howell's mm -hmm. Intercessor. It was one of the first books I read right. as a new believer. Mm -hmm. And I was like wow. blown away by the supernatural intervention of oh, God right. through through one man's prayer. And that's I know right. that there was other people yes, praying there too. Was, but but he was even the, the prophetic acts mm -hmm. and the living out of the intercession, mm -hmm. it was so phenomenal. But you've done similar things. And that was one of my assignments because I we all have different assignments. Mm -hmm. And sometimes mine are in like the concept of the book of Genesis or redigging mm -hmm. the wells. Well yep. for me it's sometimes it's been redigging the wells of prayer. Yep. So, you know, like the uh, Moravians and the Watch of the Lord, praying on site with insight, three right. different occasions, leading teams in Hernhut. In this situation, I was sent by the Lord in a dream telling me, you've redug the wells of crisis intervention, you've redug the wells of the Christian mystics and contemplative prayer. I now want you to redig the well of crisis intervention and told me that I would go on site to the Swansea. Wow. I didn't even know where the place was. I mean, I'd read the book, yes, but you forget right. things. And so I ended up with, with our dear friends, Wesley and Stacy Campbell, ministering in Mariah Chapel, Evan Roberts, the right. Great Welch Revival, and a note is passed to me from the Swansea Bible College inviting me to come over the next afternoon. And I'm going, oh God, this is an appointment. Come on. And there, and the reason I want to mention this a little bit, and it is in this book, is that I'm sitting there with Samuel Howes. I can't remember. He was about 86 years old at the time. He's with the Lord now. It was the, the only child, the only son of Reese Howes. And I went there and I started asking him this question. I said, how did your father get this level of revelation and authority mm -hmm. To, and to, in watching and prayer, to, to be able to cut this off. I said, was it by dreams? Was it visions? Was it by angelic visitations? He wouldn't answer me. And he would say, don't you think it's time for another crumpet? 
<laughs> and, and then he would say, another cup of tea. And I went back four times. Right. I was ten- gentle and protocol, but I was tenacious. And eventually, wow. tears are streaming down his face. And he looks at me. And he laid his hands on me. And this frail man laid his hands on me. I can feel this authority. I can see it right now. And there's an authority that's going to get released Whoa. to some people right now all across the globe. Wow. This is not looking, God's not looking for one Simeon or one Anna or one Elijah or one Deborah. He's looking for a company. Wow. And he laid hands upon me, tears going down his face. I said to him one more time, how did your father get this level of revelation and this level of authority? And he says to me when he laid his hands on my shoulders, he said, you must understand the Lord's servant was possessed by God. Come on. Can you look into your, your camera because there's such an anointing on you right now and just release a prayer and impartation over the viewers because it's, it's thick in here right now. You know, for such a time as this, have you been appointed? And we're each called to be watchmen in our spheres. Your sphere, all of our spheres is our family. All of our spheres will be our church and our ministry. And each of our spheres is also going to be the city, the province, the state, the nation we're a part of. But there are also special op teams. There are also special task force. And I'm speaking to you right now, and I'm calling forth a absolute, it's grace. I speak what the Lord has given to me. I speak over you right now in the name of Jesus. And some of you are being, feel like something weighty is coming oh. on your shoulders. That's because it's an increase of the government of God. It's an increase of the authority and God confidence. It's not self-confidence because I can't do this. It is God confidence. And oh. I see that both coming like a mantle resting on people of increase of authority, but I also see it as an increase internally of a God confidence. He mm-hmm. has done it all. And I just declare these two things over you now, an internal knowing it is finished, Amen. the seventh word of Jesus on the cross, and an increase of the mantle of authority to bring intervention and change. James, can you share with me just one more time the exact words of his son over you? The reason why he had that level of revelation was because... He said, you must understand the Lord's servant. That's how in honor he related to his father. You must understand the Lord's servant was possessed by God. I never asked another question that day. I didn't have to. It went beyond whether it was a dream, a vision, a visitation, an angel. It might include all of that. But I got more that day than what I went at for because I was given a key. And the key is this. Be possessed by God. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that has really touched my heart. And I want to speak from my heart to you right now. There's so many things out in the, the world that are pulling. And, and James, that's something that I've been watching. Like I've just <sighs> been in intercession over for the body of Christ. Even yeah. so many influences of the flesh, of the world, of things that would pull your attention away from God, away from his word. There's so many distractions today. And even within the church, there's yeah. just just um, a dissipation of that possession, of that of that positioning before God where nothing else matters but him alone and I feel in my spirit that there are a number of you watching that that you used to actually Mm. move in greater levels of revelation than you are right now in greater levels of possession than you are right now but as things have gotten in the way there's been temptations and things that pulled your attention and just certain thinking that made things a little bit I guess a word could be sloppy if I could use that word. But God says his call is not lifted off of you. That he loves you and he's called you 
to that level and more, even deeper than you've yeah. ever known. And I believe that right now the Spirit of God yeah. is coming on you in power to bring you back yeah. to that heart-to-heart -heart possession where you and God are entwined together as one, where nothing else matters, where you will keep the night watch oh and the God. day watch. And it's not because you have to, it, but it's because you're possessed by him. You're going to return to that place as you, you know, I can just feel some of you right now being pulled in your heart and saying, God, I've got to go back to that place because he's raising up a great company of watchmen in this hour, such as we've never seen yeah. in history. There will be books written about yeah. the exploits done through the watchmen, mm -hmm. like the Simeons, like the Annas, right. like those who have stood in the gap over the years and stood watch. We haven't seen anything yet, but it does take absolute possession to let everything else go. Everything else has to be pale. There is no grace to walk in this level of watchmanship without possession. Are you willing to give your whole self to him right now and say, God, there's nothing else in life that matters. I am compelled by love right now to yield myself afresh to you. And I feel that the spirit of God is all over you. In fact, I can feel mm -hmm. many of you weeping and and, and, and taking this up. And some of you are going to be carrying burdens for media and for entertainment uh, industry and for governments and for, for, for economy and for the poor and for, for evangelism, for harvest. I, it's like yeah. all these different exploits. And it's like God needs you. He's saying, is there one that will stand in the gap? Is there one that will manifest my watchmanship in this hour? And he has put his hand on you. We want you to bask in this right now. Just bask in him. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. But God is doing something in your life. It's undeniable for some of you. And so take this as a call from him upon your heart at this very moment. We'll see you in a minute or so. Decree a thing and it shall be established. Patricia King's new book, 31 Decrees of Blessing, provides you with powerful daily decrees to release favor, prosperity, and success in your life. This book also includes profound spiritual devotions and transforming activations designed to reveal God's purpose and destiny for you. Order 31 Decrees of Blessing now, and you will also receive Patricia King's best-selling book, Decree, and Decree for Kids a soaking CD with 10 decrees aimed at empowering your children with the words and promises of God. Order now and receive this combo for only $15. Call 866-980-5464 and mention television offer number 359 or go online to patriciaking.com. Order today and release the power of the word of God in your life. very uh, clear um, examples of watchmen. And so we're going to talk about a few of those right now. And uh, Abraham, for example, is one. Right. So in this uh, particular book, The Lifestyle of a Watchman, it's, yeah. it's divided up into 21 readings. And the reason is because it takes 21 days to develop a new habit. Right. So I'm pulling out 21 different characteristics from one for every reading. So Abraham is my template for the whole first week. Abraham, why? Oh, this man bartered with God. He stood in the gap for a city of decadence mm -hmm. of Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. But that's really not what I'm highlighting in Abraham, though it's what we often teach about. Right. It is intimate friendship. Abraham in the Bible is the first one mentioned as a prophet. In Genesis chapter 20. Right. In Abraham is called the father of faith, but Abraham is also called the friend of God. Mm -hmm. And I want people to know that this prayer thing, this watchman thing, it's not a task. Yeah. It's a on. part of a relationship. Yeah. And uh, God, I just can't hardly even touch this right now. I feel so much, I felt it earlier, so much holiness of the Lord right now around this. I just, it's the jealousy of God. And I just want you to know that God is jealous for you. Mm -hmm. And he wants you to be 
a mother or father of faith. He wants you to be someone who will have courage, but he wants you to be someone who's got intimate friendship because what the Bible says, God says, shall I do something in the earth without telling Abraham? No, I'm going to go talk to my friend. And that's... We do nothing <laughs> except he, he conferred. He confers and he yeah. speaks his secrets yeah. to his servants. Now in Amos mm -hmm. and it says the prophet, but it's to his friends. Patricia, I have some secrets I keep that he's told me that I don't tell except to him. I have some secrets that I've uh, kept with some good, but they're trusted friends. Uh -huh. We, oh my gosh, <laughs> you can be a trusted friend of yeah, God. Come on. And when you're a trusted friend of God, he can share secrets with you. I know he wants to do it. Another one of the people I highlight in, the, in this book is Anna. Oh, yeah, I love From the Anna. New Testament. Wow. Anna, she knew loss, yep. but she knew gain. Yep. She turned, I call and it. She knew calling. Yes, that's right. She knew consecration. Yeah. I call it today, you flip it. Yeah. Like you flip a region, you flip a house. Mm -hmm. Anna learned how to flip her life yep. from trauma and tragedy of being a widow mm -hmm. to being a partner. She was like what you mentioned earlier about Smith Wigglesworth. She was possessed. Oh, absolutely. She was possessed, not even day or night. She didn't leave the temple. Yeah. Fastings and prayers nonstop right. for all those year after year. This wasn't just for a season. This was a life since she was a young woman. Yes. And, and what it says is, is that she incessantly or she constantly would speak of him. Mm -hmm. So I call Anna the original Jesus freak. Oh, the original oh. Jesus fanatic is Anna. Wow. But we can be one too. You can be one also. And then the third person I use out of the 21 different readings is Daniel. So I take Abraham. It's very obtainable. Yep. Intimate friendship. Anna. A lifestyle of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. There is a cost. Yeah. But Daniel, a life of excellence, mm -hmm. a life of consecration. Mm -hmm. One of the things I really know about uh, you, Patricia, is that you know you're not your own and you set yourself apart to be a person of excellence, mm -hmm. a consecration. I, I, I almost like argued in my, myself and with God, what word do I use? I wanted to use the word excellence. The Bible uses it. But then I thought, oh, well, that might feel like it's unapproachable right. by people. Too far high and lofty. Mm -hmm. But you can be consecrated. And that's what it takes to be excellent. Yeah. Is that it, I still sense this uh, some would call it the fragrance of Christ. Right. Some would re refer to it as an atmosphere, a presence of one of the yeah. seven spirits of God. I feel so much of the holiness of God. Yeah, I feel it too. And, and it's Isaiah 11 verses one to three. In the end of verse two, it says, and he will delight in the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And I feel that, mm -hmm. I feel it right now. I sense that presence of the jealousy of God, of the holiness of the Lord. And this is not unobtainable. It's mm -hmm. free because of what Jesus has done. Mm -hmm. And I just want to speak over the viewing audience. Uh, say, oh my, I'm not holy in myself. But there is a it's changing of garments. Yeah. It's a time of changing of garments. In yeah. Zechariah 3, taking off the old unclean Come turban on. and having your mind wrapped in a clean turban. And God is unwrapping your minds like it could have been with Anna to where you're a victim mm. and he's in trauma, but he's putting a clean turban on your mind in Zechariah chapter three. And that's a Daniel because Daniel, as we did an interview for one time on divine intelligence, yep. that's available Amen. today. It's all available. It's all available. He is worthy of it all. He is worthy of it all. You know, it says in the Bible that 
that when Jesus returns, it'll be like in the days of Noah. Yeah. There's a day when everyone was going after their own stuff, but there was someone who was consecrated. Yeah. There was someone whose heart was completely his. He stood watch, he built the ark, he, he tended to the things that were on God's heart. And today God is looking for a separated people who will tend after the things that are on his heart. He's looking for watchmen today. There's so much crisis going on in the world, so much confusion. And we have to be very carefully watching over the church itself that we don't buy into that same confusion and that same double standard. We need to be one with God where our, our our flesh is absorbed in his spirit and taken over and possessed by him. And in Isaiah 62, it says, For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not keep quiet until her righteousness goes forth like brightness and her salvation like a torch that is burning. This is what we're called to in this hour. God is looking for watchmen on his wall who will give birth to the emergence yes. of a bride who is so beautiful and so lovely and, and so set apart for him. And it's about his love for you and for the world that we live in. And love is calling you now. So thank you so much for joining us on today's broadcast. We know that God is touching your heart. There is this, I don't know, a transference of holiness. It's in the atmosphere right now. God's doing something special and he's making an appeal mm. to you. And I just believe that you are responding to it. And so thank you so much. And I highly recommend that you getting this, this book, read it, devour it, let it transform you. The lifestyle of a watchman. You are called, you are invited to take God's hand and as his friend, partner with them for the birthing of great things in the world today. Remember this, God loves you with an everlasting love. He really, really does. So let everything that you do and all that you are be birthed out of that revelation. We'll see you next time. Decree a thing and it shall be established. Patricia King's new book, 31 Decrees of Blessing, provides you with powerful daily decrees to release favor, prosperity, and success in your life. This book also includes profound spiritual devotions and transforming activations designed to reveal God's purpose and destiny for you. Order 31 Decrees of Blessing now, and you will also receive Patricia King's best-selling book, Decree, and Decree for Kids, a soaking CD with 10 decrees aimed at empowering your children with the words and promises of God. Order now and receive this combo for only $15. Call 866-980-5464 and mention television offer number 359 or go online to patriciaking.com. Order today and release the power of the Word of God in your life.